John chapter 12, verse 35 through 36, and also verse 46. Jesus replied, The light is with you for only a little while. Walk while you have the light so that darkness doesn't overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness don't know where they're going. As long as you have the light, believe in the light so that you might become people whose lives are determined by the light. After Jesus said these things, he went away and hid from them. 46. I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me won't live in darkness. The sunrise, there's nothing like it. It's elemental. It's centering. It reminds us that we're small and that God is in control. It reminds us to breathe. It's an experience that helps us feel that we have this soul within us. God's certainly no closer to us, but when we witness the sunrise, the veil, it just seems to be lifted just a bit, and God seems closer to us. Without the darkness of the night, the sunrise would never show up. We wouldn't see it. <laughs> the contrast of darkness makes darkness a partner of the sunrise of sorts. The light giving a contrast to our feelings as well. For longer than humankind can remember, the sunlight has meant life, sustenance, visibility, warmth, and comfort. It's helpful to be able to see all around you. And with the sun's light, we can discover the world and one another. Sunrise is also a transitional time, often an in-between time. It's night and then it's day. And it happens gradually and in some parts of the world faster than others. In fact, it takes 23 minutes from first light to the sunrise here in Juneau Beach. And that's actually pretty fast. And we love the sunrise, don't we? We are the people of the dawn. We wake up early every Easter Sunday and schlep our chairs down to the dune to worship God while the sun rises. And it's magnificent. The light of the sun means life. In fact, the most beautiful part of our sanctuary at Ocean View United Methodist Church are those stained glass windows that are not visible without the sun's light behind them. And the image of God as light is not a new one. It's not exclusively Christian or even Judeo-Christian. This idea that the source of all life is the sun goes out beyond the boundaries of one or two religious traditions. Almost every religion on the planet has at least some reverence for sunlight. And what I see in that is ultimate truth. John, the gospel writer for our message for today, knew that this literary device of the light of the world would be compelling to his audience. He knew that it would be the best way to help the hearers understand the nature of God and kind of how God's love works. It's light. And Jesus is that light. And here's how light functions. We've already talked about vision. It's difficult to see in the dark, but the light of day shines in all places to reveal what exists. Now, some don't appreciate light because it exposes what we would rather hide. 
sometimes we don't like the light. We would rather hide than risk being exposed. But in the end, it's the only way to heal from our baggage and emotional hurts, to shed some light on it, to take it out and look at it and let the light of day shine upon it. More specifically, the point that Jesus is making here in John's gospel, when he says, unless you have the light, you can't see where you're going. So walk in the light. It's living a life that has been transformed by the love of Jesus. And it's a lot like the sunrise, going from dark to light, from night to day, from limited vision to full sight. Walking in the light lets the light in and exposes the shadowy corners of our deeds and our personalities. Walking in the light means refraining from unkind words. Walking in the light means treating others like you'd want to be treated. Walking in the light means being truly alive, embracing aliveness in the light of Jesus. The transformation that comes from a relationship with God through the light of Jesus Christ changes how a person walks in the world, not just where they're going, but also how they get there. Some of us, you know, may have been headed down a shady lane, content to be in the dark because the darkness is good at concealing our evil deeds and thoughts. You know, still for others of us, the world is lacking in brilliance in general. So we live on one side or the other of the border of indifference to our planet, to our fellow human beings. Not necessarily evil, but still not up to full brightness. We make snide remarks, curse under our breath look down our noses and gripe and complain and judge and snap and honk and gesture and growl and stomp out of the room. What's that about? Is it because we tend to lecture, lambast, bully, and berate one another online and in various social media platforms on a daily basis? Could it be because we merely see others doing it and it just gets normalized? And so it speaks to the idea that we all need to be running our own defense, right? On the ready to lash out against one another. When was it that we used to assume the best from strangers? And why have we gotten so far away from giving other people the benefit of the doubt? Maybe... We need some light. Maybe we need the transition of a sunrise. You know how when you're having a bad day, things just feel better the next morning? As if the light returning to the sky is a promise that everything is in God's hands. Somehow, some way, it's all going to work out. The dawn of a day is a new beginning, a chance to begin again to choose a better course, a kinder, gentler path, a chance to walk in the light of day. It's Jesus' words, not mine. He said, walk while you have the light. So we should do that. Walk while we have the light. For Christmas is here and the light has come. Amen.